and welcome to the most exciting talk happening at 5.30 p.m. here at Trailhead DX. All right. It is an honor and a privilege for me to get to come and give this talk to you. I'm going to talk about live apps in Quip and how you build them. This is me. Uh, I'm an engineer at Quip. Quip is based here in San Francisco. We're a Salesforce company, and we work closely with them. My agenda for today is to talk about what Quip is. OK, first off, how many of you know what Quip is? All right. Awesome. How many of you know about live apps? OK, this is going well so far. And how many of you want to see a demo? OK, this is, this is a win. So the story of Quip is that Quip was started because we realized that people are in their jobs trying to get things done. And primarily, they're trying to create things, and they're trying to consume them and share them and make them better. When you create things, you tend to make, work with files or presentations or calendars or things in creation mode. And then whenever you want to get feedback, you might like send a message in Slack and include an attachment. You might send an email and put an attachment in it. This is, puts the burden and the onus of organizing all of this into your brain. How many of us want to do that kind of organization? No hands. So the idea of Quip was to put you in control, put all this together, put all your tools into one document. In Quip, we call this a living document. The idea is the data is always live, it's always up to date, and it's always collaborative. Quip is really about people. We happen to use technology, but Quip is about people and helping you make better decisions. And it's not just for one part of your company. This is important to me. As a software engineer, I want feedback from the marketing team. I want feedback from the copywriting team. I want feedback from the sales team. I want everyone to be able to give me input. I don't want them to say, oh, I can't file an issue against you because I don't have a GitHub account. Like, that stinks. I want everyone to be on the same team. So Quip puts you on the same team. Here at Trailhead DX, we're excited to announce that we're putting out third-party live apps on the App Exchange. LucidChart, right there, has their app on the App Exchange. You can go install it now into your Quip site. Use LucidChart for free, but you should sign up and become a LucidChart customer too. And that is the promise of live apps. We want to be a platform for you to build custom workflows, solve problems that affect you, help companies that want to get in front of our users, put them into our documents, collaborate, and go from there. So I'm here to talk about how live apps work from a technical perspective. My goal is to get you to leave this talk and want to go try to build one, try to do something in Quip. So the live apps architecture is focused on the, the document. You have a host document. Inside of the host document, there's an iframe. That iframe has a security sandbox on it, which you have the ability to control. And admins have the ability to see what servers you choose to go network to, what tools you might want to use, and how big the apps are going to be. So the iframe can be a certain set of dimensions. It can be resizable. It can be draggable. But it lives inside of a document. So to get started, it's helpful if you know some JavaScript and some CSS. In this demo, I'm going to be using React a little bit. So if you know those tools, cool. If you don't, no big deal. Um, I have a list here to some links to documentation, examples, and the Dev Console. And I'm going to show you what those look like. All right. So to set up a live app, you should invest about five minutes to get started. It's not a big deal. You create a live app in your Dev Console. You run some magic command line mumbo jumbo. That creates an app.ele. That app.ele is a zip file. You upload it to Quip. There is no hosting. There's no servers. You upload a zip file to Quip and we serve your live app. So when you create a live app in the Dev Console, you can see there's a big link when you go to the Dev Console. You just click it. We create an instance where we assign you an app ID. This is an app ID that you will paste into a file in your directory. You can see in the middle here, this is the scaffolding of an app. We provide a tool to give you this scaffolding. You don't have to do anything. You find the manifest.json file. You put your app ID into it. You run the command run build, which is conveniently hidden up here. 
And at the end, you get a zip file, an app.ele, which you upload again back into the dev console, and voila, you can insert your live app. You go to a document. Here, I'm doing the sticky note app. You type at name of your live app. Here, it's at sticky. You see sticky note. I click that, and boom, there's my live app embedded into my document. Thank you. All right, now that's cool, but now you actually probably want to write code and make this thing better. So in order to do that, you run a small server on your system with Node. I'm going to run it and show you how easy it is. You set this flag here that says use local resources with a menu in, in the Quip app. This means now Quip will connect to the server running on your machine to get JavaScript and CSS and use that to draw the live app. So we're going to do some live coding. We're going to make things. We're going to break things. And I'm going to show you how this works. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the example sticky note, sticky note live app, which is on GitHub. The example code is all there, as is the code for the thing we're going to build. We're going to make it so much better. We're going to add placeholder text. We're going to add a little link at the bottom of every sticky note that says clear, that enables you to clear that text. And we're going to add commenting. Commenting is really important as a feature. If you were going to build commenting into your own app and your own system, not only would you want to build commenting, but you'd want to build notifications. You'd want to build push for your mobile customers. This is what Quip gives you out of the box. Quip gives you the ability to communicate with the other people in your Quip instance without you having to write any code. We'll let you put this together any way you want to, but we'll handle the hard stuff. So I'm going to show you what that means. All right, so code. Here, first, I'm going to show you. You saw my cat. Isn't my cat awesome? Um, here, let me get out of this guy. So here's the demo. Here's the sticky note running an equip document. This is the basic one. And I want to talk about what makes this interesting, because this looks like a text box inside of an orange div, but it's more than that. Here, I get formatting right out of the box inside what's called a rich text box here. This is the Quip editor built into a little place for you to work on. Now I have an insertion menu in this live app. I can say, Kevin, take a look. Now when I do that, a lot of things happen that aren't obvious. But one, Kevin got a notification to come to this document. And I didn't have to build that. And that's brilliant. But Let's look at the code so that you can understand how the sticky note app is built and what you have to do. It's not much. So here's the sticky note. Every Quip app has access to a database, a little key value store that your app gets access to. This is the entirety of the sticky note app. It gets a call back here from this call, quip.apps. Quip.apps is the namespace that we give you to write code with. So you say quip.apps initialize. You get a callback that you implement. You then get a reference to the root record. Quip's database for your live app is a key value store. It's parent-child entities. You can make it rich if you want to and have lots of children and children of children. Or you can just, in this case, have a single root record. And then we're going to have one property on it, the sticky note. So let's look at what this is the equivalent of the database here. We have the sticky note root, which extends the root record. It has one property, sticky note, that is an instance of a rich text record. This is the data model. As the Lucidchart guys were saying, this is the model in the model view controller world. And this is our in instantiation. We, re we render our app. This is React code, but it's very basic. And it works out of the box with Quip. You render your app. We pass it a reference to this rich text record, this entity. And then we come into our app. This should look very familiar to you. There's nothing magical about our Quip React usage. It's just a simple app class. We have a render method here. You notice that we know we're going to get in a rich text record. And here we've said this would be an instance of the Quip app's rich text record. So we come into render. First off, you see this style block. Here, we're doing inline styles. You can also do CSS. You can do less. You can do more. But in inline styles, you have access, again, to the Quip app's namespace so that you can make an app that looks good by default in Quip. Quip comes with a set of colors and a color palette so that you don't have to choose. And you're going to get something that will always look good to your users. So here, we're going to set the background color of our sticky note to this lovely yellow. And we're going to set the border as well. 
And then here's our sticky note. It's one box, and inside of it is the rich text box. And all we had to pass to the rich text box is this rich text record, the piece of the database for it to store data to. And that's all. So that got us this excellent sticky note here. And you see there's a set of, of menus I can use for this, and I've gotten some functionality. But now we're going to supercharge the sticky note. Are you ready? I see a lot of nods, a lot of whooping. I hear they don't actually video me or you, so I'm carrying this forward. This is the sticky note we're going to build. This one has more capabilities. You can see I've built this nice clear button here to wipe out the text. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and commenting. Now, this is actually awesome. Built-in comments that can go anywhere into your live app that you want to. All you have to do is drop a div somewhere into your live app, tell Quip that that's the place where you want commenting to happen, and boom, you have commenting. And that's pretty slick. So now I can tell Kevin you know, a piece of, you know, say hi. Now he gets a notification, and he can come and interact on my live app. And I didn't have to build that code. That lets me focus on the thing I do best, which is writing a sticky note because I'm amazing at writing a sticky note. So let's look at this advanced sticky note. The main change we need to make here is that we're going to have a regular sticky note root like we had before. But instead of just using an instance of the Quip app's rich text record, we're going to extend the rich text record to tell it two things. One, we want to, tell it a, we want to give it a default placeholder just like you would use in HTML where you set the placeholder bit, we need to give you an API for that because the rich text box is not just an input element. So this is the API to set the placeholder text. And then here we, set, we implement one method, supports comments is true. Now there is one more method we'll need to implement, which is get DOM. That tells Quip where in your live app to put the comments interface. But we're going to go implement that on the React side where we have an instance of the DOM. So down here, nothing is different. Everything stayed the same. So here, you can see this is the functionality for the clear button. I just dropped another div onto the screen, and I've implemented a method on click clear. On click clear takes the reference to the rich text record and calls the API method replace content with the empty string. That's how I'm able to accomplish clearing the rich text box. Also. Here's the rich text box again. We're going to look at this is the code for commenting. I've decided to place the comment icon, as you saw, in the top right. So I use a div to position it and embed the quip comments trigger here. And all I have to pass is that same rich text record to the comments trigger, and we get commenting. So that's pretty awesome. Now I've got this lovely comments thing. What if I want to show you live coding? What if you get a, res a user who says, you know what? I don't want that comments icon in the top right. I want it in the top left, or the bottom left. Can you feel me? Yes, you can. So all I have to do, I'm going to do a little changing here, mostly just to prove to you how easy this is. The reload functionality comes down. Can I get an amen? Come on. I knew I was going to do R&B. So you can see you have access to all the tools you're sort of used to here in Quib. And my live demo is giving me trouble. So I'm going to take a quick look. This looks like, oh, it worked. All you had to do is go away and come back. So here now the comments trigger is in the bottom left. So that's pretty powerful. You get the idea that now we can take DOM, implement Quip tools on top of it, do whatever you want to. It's quite simple. So I'm going to show you a few more things about the Quip platform here. I'm going to show you the developer console. This is where you start. I showed you a screenshot of this. But as you can see, I've built a lot of live apps. And down here, you can see here's my sticky note. This is what you'll see as a developer. You have the control of the name of your live app. You have the control to set owners, other people that can collaborate with you on your live app. You can set versioning. Right now, you just get one version, but we're going to give you more versions. You have this disabled state so that if you discover a bug, you can temporarily disable your live app. A lot of stuff that I think developers would want. 
And then you have the ability here to upload the app.ele and change things. As you can see, I'm an employee. I have the ability to publish. This is what's coming next in the Quip Live Apps platform. If you work for a company and you build a live app for your company, you probably want everyone at your company to be able to use that live app. That's coming. Right now, we can do that for you on the slide. We just need to do some, a little code, make it easy for you to do. You can, however, publish to the App Exchange and let the whole world install your app today. So here you can see this is our repository. We pretty actively try to focus on the examples here. We have a ton of example code. In here, and this is the source code for the calendar live app that everyone in Quip uses, the Kanban board, all the advanced live apps that everyone has access to. You can come and read our code, see how we did it, learn from it, take it, and go from there. You can also start with any of these directories as your own live app, upload it into your own site, and noodle on it and make it better. If you don't like how we did the calendar, you can improve it. And that's actually, again, why we built the platform. We don't think we can build the best workflows for every company in the world. We think you can make your own workflows work better. One more thing to show here. This is our API guide, along with a series of reference docs that should be familiar to anybody. This is the quip.apps API space. You have the selection of example apps, that we talked about. If you want to learn how to do OAuth, if you want to learn how to draw into canvases, if you want to learn how to make network requests, this is where you can start. Again, this will link you back to GitHub. The recipes section is a little bit more interactive. Here, you can find a set of common things that we found app developers all want to do, like being able to change the size of your app, being able to store custom data, being able to debug, being able to work with user info, Pretty much anything that you might want to do, we've tried to document. And anything that's missing here, we want to hear from you. We want to make it better. So the more you can give us, the more we can give you. And that is all I have, except for the ability to answer questions. Thank you. Do you have a question, sir? No. OK. Do you guys have any questions? Hi. Uh, sorry, this one's terribly specific. <laughs> um, I was doing the trail that you guys have up on uh, Trailhead. And I was doing it on Windows. And there's a Python dependency for doing yes. builds. And, um, and I kept getting assertion errors kicked out. And I went to Stack Exchange and all the normal places. And everyone's kind of like, yep, and no answers. So maybe a little more help on the Windows build process. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, we will. Win Windows is an area that we plan to focus on to provide better tooling and better support for Windows development going forward. Uh, so can we use uh, AngularJS instead of React? Can we use AngularJS? Yes, you can use AngularJS oh, okay. in the live app. Lucidchart managed to use not only Angu React, but also AngularJS. So you, you might want to talk to them about how they manage to embed Angular in their app. But in the end, all you need to run is a build script that's going to create a single JS file, an output file, and then you zip it up and upload it to Quip. So as long as you have a build script that'll work with Angular, you're good to go. All right. Thank you very much.